In this video, I'm going to show you the very basics of the Volume Builder in Cinema 4D. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dreadlabs and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer. In today's video, we're going to dive deeper into the Volume Builder. It's a tool that I've been using for the past couple of years in Cinema 4D. It's one of the most useful tools when it comes to creating abstract art. Absolutely love it. Uh, the thing is, some people have a little bit of trouble getting into the Volume Builder. And that's why I want to make this video. One more thing before we dive into the video, and that's that you can get the Cinema 4D file for yourself. I'll explain a little bit later in the video, but for now, if you just want to get the Cinema 4D file, there's a link down in the description. Now, without any further ado, let's dive straight into the video. All right, so we're here in Cinema 4D, and the very first thing that we're going to explain is the difference between polygons and voxels. You don't have to follow along yet, but the thing I'm going to do is go to display here and click on grow shading lines. I've just put in a sphere and a sphere in the volume builder. On the left here, you'll see the sphere as a polygon object. What I mean by this is that on these polygons, which are the squares you can see on here, they basically make up the 3D project. For example, if we would edit this, we could grab one of these points and move it outward. And as you can see, by moving the points of the polygon, we changed how our 3D shape looks. The volume builder here is made with voxels, however. You can actually do different types of voxels, but for now, all you need to know is that these voxels are basically 3D pixels that make up a certain shape. Basically, it's a box filled with little cubes that make up a sphere in this case. As you can vaguely see here, uh, what I did was I grabbed a 3D model from Turbo Squid, in this case a scorpion, and I've put that in the volume builder. And as you can see, the volume builder tries to recreate this scorpion with all of these voxels, these little cubes. The first thing that we can change in the volume builder here is the voxel size. So if we make the voxel size lower, as you can imagine, that changes a little of the detail about this model. So if we change the voxel size from 10 centimeters to 5 centimeters, for instance, you can see that the model is getting more detail and detail. Let's lower this to 1. And you can almost see that it looks like a realistic 3D model. The thing is, however, this and this is not a 3D model yet. For that, we have to do something that's called a mesh. Under the volume builder menu here, you can see that the volume mesh is also a thing. So a general construction of a 3D model made with the volume builder here is the sphere or the object that's in the volume builder will be a child of that. And the volume builder will be a child of the volume mesher. I usually don't really mess with the volume mesher. All you have to notice is that the volume mesher basically turns our voxels into a 3D model. Same goes with this case. So as you can see, if we click on the volume builder, we have the field here where we can change the voxel size. Let's change that to five centimeters uh, so we can see the voxels a little bit clearer again. And once we go to the volume mesher here, I'm holding Alt or Option if you're on a Mac before I let go of my mouse here. And this makes our uh, volume builder a child of the volume mesher. We again go to display, grow shading lines. You can see that this now actually consists of polygons. So if we turn off the volume mesher, you can see that we're back at the voxel setup that we had before. So that's kind of what you need to know if you want to start rendering stuff. Make sure that you actually are using a mesh, as we call it. So in conclusion, you can put different 3D objects into a volume builder which turns it into a composition of voxels. And if you put that volume builder into the volume mesher, that creates a mesh and that can be an actual 3D model. So now that we know how the volume builder works, let's see if we can create some cool abstract artwork. So I'm gonna start from scratch. And one thing that's really easy to do and what I suggest you start out with is by grabbing a normal sphere and putting that into a cloner. And under the cloner object in the tab here, let's just turn this to three. So we now have basically three by three spheres in a nice block like that. And I kind of want to randomize this just a little bit. So with the cloner selected, I'm going over the cloner here and I'm going to click on the random effector. And basically with the random effector, we can randomize certain aspects of these spheres that are inside the cloner. So let's click on parameter. And here you can see it can randomize up to 50 centimeters in every axis uh, on every single one of these spheres. So if we make this a little bit more drastically, let's say 100 by 100 by 100, you can see that the difference between these uh, is a little bit more. We'll also do the scale, check on uniform scale, and we'll just press in 0.25. And this will also create a little bit of a variation in the size of these spheres, as you can see. So now that we have that, let's see if we can turn this into one 
nice looking abstract sculpture. So first off, let's go to the volume builder. I'm holding Alder option on my keyboard again uh, to make a child of the volume builder. And as you can see, it now starts turning all of these spheres that we have into voxels. Since some of these overlap, you can see that the overlap is visible right here. The cool thing is that the volume builder simply turns this into a one like object. So next up, let's bring in the volume mesher and make that a parent of the volume builder. And as you can see, we now have a 3D model where we have this nice meta ball like sculpture where these spheres are basically like kind of glued together. Sense. So I think that I should note is uh, once we lower the voxel size again, because there's more detail in there, these like connections are getting like tinier and tinier. Let's lower this down to one centimeter. As you can see, it takes a little bit longer to load already. Let's change the shading so we can see a little bit clearer what's going on. And if we zoom in here, you can see that the uh, voxel size is so detailed that it can see the polygons that were in our uh, segments of our sphere before. So if you just turn everything off and we'll go to grow shading lines, you'll see that these polygons here are visible and basically the volume mesher sees that. So it kind of makes sure that our shape is kind of intact. And this brings me to a next part of like using the volume builder, which I really, really like. And that's the SDF smooth. So there's a couple of effects in here, but we'll, we'll start out with the smooth because it's, I think, the most used one. So once we click on this, maybe a little bit hard to see. So what we're going to do is up the voxel size. So now that we made our voxel size just a little bit bigger, it's a little bit easier to see what's going on here. So if I turn off the SDF smooth, you can vaguely make out the polygons on our spheres here. And the SDF smooth basically smooths that out a little bit for us. So that's actually a very convenient way into creating nice smooth shapes here. If you want to make your effect a little bit more drastic, you can also change the voxel distance and iterations. The voxel distance, as you might have guessed, if we make that a little bit higher, it basically smooths stuff out even more. The number of iterations is basically how many times this goes through a smoothing process. So the higher this number is, the smoother your objects will be. So this is what it looks like with the SDF smooth, and this is without. So as you can see, it looks a lot better. Another cool thing in the volume builder is that you can also intersect or subtract one object from the other. Let me show you this by minimizing the cloner. We're going to make this two by two by two. And this is so that we have a little bit of a easier shape to work with. So it's a little bit better to see what we have going on here. So I'm going to make another sphere. Let's say that we want to make this sphere uh, basically bite out a chunk of this composition right here. We just simply drag the shape into the volume builder right next to the cloner. You can see that it becomes a part of our mesh. Uh, and that's because like as you can see here in the volume builder, the sphere is on top of all the layers here. Quick side note, as you can see, the sphere is on top of the SDF smooth. And that basically means that the sphere isn't affected by the SDF smooth. So if we drag this down, it becomes part of the smoothing process, as you can see. Right next to the sphere, you can see that the mode is set to union. And if we change this to subtract, it starts taking a bite out of the shape here. So as you can imagine, this opens up a lot of possibilities in creating different types of shapes. And you don't really need the bool anymore uh, in Cinema 4D if you're familiar with that. We can also intersect. And basically, this means that everything where the shapes intersect becomes visible. And this can also create for some really nice organic shapes. As you can see, this kind of looks like a mitten. For now, I'm just going to change mine to subtract. And I'll show you one more thing here. I don't want to get into too much details in this beginner episode, of course. The only thing I want to show you is another effect here. And that's called the dilate and erode. We can access that by clicking on the SDS Smooth and then by holding our mouse button, you can see that there's more here. We'll let go on our mouse when it's on the dial in the road. And you can kind of already saw a little bit of a difference here. I'm just gonna make it a little bit more drastic. Essentially, you can just create an offset here and the offset, we can just put that to 15 and this adds in more volume than it already was. So basically it puffs out all of the voxels that we had before. A cool thing, however, is you can also use this in the negative value. So if we press minus 10, it's maybe hard to see. So I'll just turn it off for a second. This is what we had before the dilate and road. And this is what we had with the dilate and road. We can also make this a little bit more drastic like here. And as you can see, this can create for some other types of shapes that you might like. So in our case, we don't really need the dilate and road, but I figured I will just show you what it looks like. Let's just delete that. And actually, I'm fairly happy with what this looks like. 
and I encourage you to really start playing around with the cloner with all different types of objects put them in the volume builder and experiment with them because this is the perfect way to create abstract art in Cinema 4D. I still have a couple of best practices left I wouldn't leave the video just yet because these best practices can help you prevent you from crashing Cinema 4D and that is because the volume builder can be really really high sensitive when it comes to using your GPU or your CPU. I'm not really familiar with hardware, I'm just a guy that had a Cinema 4D crash a lot of times because I wasn't really aware with what the volume builder could do and it's a little bit of a sensitive thing I guess. Anyways, before we dive into that, I just want to talk to you a little bit about how you can get the Cinema 4D file that I made in this video. If you do not know me and my channel, I have been making tutorials for graphic designers and visual artists, freelancers for over 4 years now and we're around 500 videos in at this point. That means that I have over 500 videos for you guys to enjoy, learn how to become a better creative, learn how to learn your first client, learn how to become a graphic designer. Basically all of those tutorials are free. The reason I can give these videos for free to you guys is because I have my Patreon channel and my web store. Thanks to those I can generate enough income to don't worry about getting a day job because if I was forced to get a day job I wouldn't be able to write, record and edit all of these videos for you guys. On my website I sell assets for graphic designers such as textures, vector shapes and more. And on my Patreon channel you can get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials as well as the past live streams that I did where you can see my full design process. On top of that, as a Patreon you'll get a 15% discount in my asset web store where I sell these textures that I just mentioned. As well as an exclusive role in my Discord server where we have over 3000 designers and visual artists talking with each other, learning from each other, asking for feedback and much more. There's also a slightly more expensive tier that contains exclusive tutorials such as how to make a Y2K Ray flyer how to start your own clothing brand and many more tutorials as well as an additional 100 project files from all of my Creatober videos essentially where I make these really intricate designs you can just get the project files for them if you become an upper tier Patreon. Of course I do understand that not everyone has the budget to support Dreadlabs in that way but if you still want to help out leaving a like and a comment on this video will really help it with the algorithm as well as subscribing to my channel and clicking on that notification button if you don't want to miss out on any future videos. With all of that out of the way, let's dive into the best practices when it comes to using the volume builder in Cinema 4D. So the first one's rather obvious, uh, but I'm going to show you anyway. Don't make the voxel size too small. Let's just do 0.1 centimeter. As you can see, it's already loading quite some time. We might even get a crash, I'm not sure. Of course, this all depends on the hardware that you're using. But as you can see, it takes a long time in order to load this. Yeah, I'm figuring out that my volume builder has crashed. It has been stuck at 66% for a while now. So best practice number one is don't make your voxel size too small. Usually it doesn't really matter. If you feel like your sculptures or your meshes aren't detailed enough, you can use these smooth effects to smoothen out your work. But using too much of these smooth effects also takes a lot of time recalculating and stuff like that so it really slows down your workflow and your computer i found out that you can kind of still see the surfaces of polygons uh, even though i used a smooth thing and it doesn't really look that nice and in that case i would always advise you to use the remesher so you can access the remesher in here and it's this icon with the triangle and the arrows here so I'm holding Alt or Option again on my keyboard to make the volume mesher a child of the remesh. But just by looking at this, you can see that the sculpture now, in terms of the mesh, makes way more sense than it did before. Uh, you can also change the mesh density here by grabbing and playing around with the slider. You can also change that to a polygon count if you have a max polygons that you want to use in your uh, model. Uh, but what I would do then is then right click and then click on current state to object. And this will leave you with an actual 3D model of the remesh, as you can see right here. And believe me, that drastically speeds up the workflow of your computer. Just make sure that you don't have to edit anything else yet. And otherwise, always make sure that you have a backup copy. So yeah, guys, there you have it. A beginner tutorial on the volume builder and the volume mesher in Cinema 4D. I hope it made sense. I was going through it fairly quickly. But if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Or if you're stuck at a certain step, you can always share a screenshot on our Discord server and me or someone else from the server can help you out there. Another video I'm planning soon is creating abstract art with Cinema 4D. And I basically wanted this video to get out there so that everyone who uses Cinema 4D can follow along with that video. Because in that video, I'm going to use the volume builder and the volume mesher. But I'm going to do a couple of advanced methods. And essentially, I want to dive a little bit deeper into what the volume builder and the volume mesher is capable of. 
So keep your eyes peeled for that. In the meantime, don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel if you have not done that already. With all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.